We are so thankful that you're tuned in right here on Cornerstone Television for Hope Today. I'm your host, Amanda Brocker, along with Matt Cogley and Matt. Yeah. Today's guests are amazing. Oh, They're yeah. not going to want to miss one second. Yes, trust me. Stay tuned. We've got a lot because coming up on today's program, find out what it's like to be living in Israel in the midst of war. In just a moment, we'll be joined with Yasmin Mazawi. She is an Arab Christian who lives in Israel and serves as a volunteer paramedic. She's going to be sharing what it's like in Israel right now and what she believes are the keys to peace in a time of war. Amanda, I mean, I can honestly only imagine, right, what it's like to be boots on the ground in Israel right now. But... It's going to be powerful and excited to hear what God is doing over there as well. It is. And like one of her heart's desires is seeing unity. Yeah. Unity. And I can tell you our other interview on this same program that you are not going to want to miss also has to do with unity of the generations. Well, coming up later, we will be joined by teens who are living for the Lord. We're going to hear their stories and discover what they are doing in their schools to tell others about Jesus. I would say this is the day and the hour. Yes. There is so much chaos happening all around us, oh, yeah. but it is a truth that we can have hope in yeah. Jesus. Yeah, you know, honestly, it is inspiring to me to hear what's going on around the world, you know, people in foreign Sweet. countries other than the United mm -hmm. States. But it's another thing to hear some of our youth, you know, some of our, our next generation being unashamed for the gospel. Because I think, man, we can agree that there's just a lot of craziness that's happening, that's you know, and there's nothing more inspiring to me than even like your own son. That's <laughs> yeah. right. I know I'm so excited. I get to interview my own son and some of his other, I'm going to call them colleagues, but they, yeah. you know, they were all on that nine month missions trip wow. to the local uh, public school. And God did a lot of amazing things this past year. And yeah. I know he has a lot of amazing things in store. So you're not going to want to miss out. Maybe call up a friend, tell them, hey, you got to watch Hope today yeah. on Cornerstone Television. Let's go. Well, hey, as you all know, on October, October 7th, Hamas launched a devastating surprise attack on Israel. Since then, the war has escalated, and our guest today has made it her mission to save lives. Yasmin Mazawi is an Arab Christian who serves as a volunteer paramedic in Israel. She joins us now to update us on the current status of Israel and how her relationship with God is carrying her through these difficult days. Yasmin, thank you so much for joining us today on Hope Today. Thank you so much. Yes, you know, I, I think it's, it's, we're always interviewing people from, you know, mainly the United States, but to know what's going on in Israel, you know, you're there. But let's, let's get back to a little bit of the roots. Your family's from Nazareth. Tell us a little bit, how deep do your roots go there? Oh, um, my family's roots in Nazareth run very deep. I mean, going back several generations, um, we we love Nazareth. It's an amazing city. We have always been here. Uh, it's a place where we grew up and we're deeply connected to. Um, so this connection is a source of strength and inspiration for us. Yeah. Yeah, I'm inspired by your story a little bit right now as I get to know you, that you volunteer as an EMS. Like not many people would just volunteer, especially maybe where you are currently. Tell us about that. How did that even come about? Wow, it's I, I, that this question takes me back about 10 years ago. Um, I grew up in a home which is open to people, cultures, uh, for, to the diverse people from different backgrounds, no matter race, gender or color. Um, so one day my parents came to me and they asked me, Yasmin, would you like to go and volunteer at Magen David Adom? Um, and, I, and for me, that was like, of course. I mean, I trust my parents. I know that they will guide me to take me to the right path and to to place where I can share the values I grew up on at home. And I found these values at Magen David Adom. Um, and with the, with the employees and my colleagues and the people I work with, um, from diverse backgrounds. Um, it's amazing. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. Just mentioning you have to work with multiple people or people of religions and backgrounds. Has it been challenging for you to have to do that? How do you navigate with those rela relationships? Sorry. Um, thank you for this question. Actually, um, it was, I think if, if I zoom out, it's just amazing to see how we 
as colleagues at Magen David Adom, that each one of us is different and from diverse by backgrounds. And, and um, I, I like to use this analogy and say that each one of us is like a pearl and what connects between us is this necklace that is um, built on values and love and one goal that we share, which is saving lives. And it's just amazing to see how we work all together, Jews, Christians, Muslims, and Bedouins for one goal in saving lives. Yeah, with, I mean, have you found, you know, again, with your different colleagues and beliefs, um, has it been challenging even for your religious views yourself? Um, no, it was just amazing working together. Yeah, uh, you mentioned like, obviously EMS, they save lives. And you know, for you, you're saving lives in the natural for the war or bombings. But let's maybe even talk about, I, I love just talking about your colleagues, just thinking about all the different viewpoints. Do you get opportunities just to even really minister to them your beliefs with the gospel? Of course, of course. And I could say also that I love to share my belief and my beliefs and faith and the faith, sorry, and the gospel with my patients as well. Even sometimes when I go to emergency cases and I have this time to share with my patients and the, the patient's family also that uh, to be strong and that uh, God, our Heavenly Father is with us and, you know, to share my faith and to strengthen them and to be the source of light to them at these really hard times. Um, I love to do this and I, I really try to find every opportunity to talk about this. Amen. I think it's so amazing that we're even, you know, online with you right now and talk to us because yesterday we were reading that there was a lot of bombing happening in northern Israel and that's where you're at but out of that you know describe that to us but talk to us about how has that actually opened the door for more of these very important conversations um actually that, that's right and even just before the interview uh began we had sirens everywhere here in the north um and during this time, the only thing we think about is saving lives, no matter, no, no, no politics at Magen David Adom. It's not a political body at all. And we all uh, believe that we are here for one goal, which is saving lives. So no place for politics. And, you know, we're united here. We're all together. We work together. We save lives of peoples, of Arabs and Jews and Muslims and Christian in the borders, in the north and in the south and in every single uh, place in the country. And what, what was it, you know, you're talking about the Mega and Davida Dome. What was it that really attracted you to wanting to be, you know, a part of that? Oh, um, I think the, the shared values at Mega and Davida Dome, mm -hmm. the diversity. Um, and I feel that it's my second home. I, I love Magen David Adom and I love the people I work with. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just an amazing place. And, and I can even say that it's amazing to show the world our work together, how we work together, because um, hopefully one day um, everyone will be able to see how we as employees and colleagues work together, even though we're different, we're diverse, but we're, we're strong together, we're united. You know, one thing I think that many of us probably may even never experience and are so curious about is what it's like to almost even be right, right in the midst of war like that, bombings, chaos. I mean, it's scary. It's fearful. Please walk us through what does that look like for you on a day-to-day -day basis? Sure. Um, it's, it's scary. It's definitely scary. It, it's I mean, hearing all the time the bombs and the sirens and being with patients. Sometimes um, if I want to describe how I feel, it's like to, to disconnect the mind from our hearts, you know, and um, sometimes we have to make this um, disconnection, let's call it, because it's really scary. And I have to be, as a paramedic in the field, I have to be very strong. We work with the IDF, we work with the police, we work with MDA, we all work together. And wow. especially here, um, I because I serve in the North, so um, just a very uh, short case that we have in our daily life. 
So when I have any emergency case in the north, we go, we work all together, the IDF and the police, they bring us the patients. Uh, we treat the patients, we go to the hospital, we come back to the border and we work all the teams together. It's scary, uh, but we have to stay faithful and strong and to be this yeah. source of light to the people around us and uh, to the families and to the patients as well. I'm so interested and captivated that you are from Nazareth. Like that reminds me of Jesus. Yes. But I'm just thinking, how did your family uh, come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior compared to like traditional Jewish tradition? Uh, we were born to Christian families. So my parents and my grandparents as well. And we... Um, um, we came into Jesus like in a very, very, very young age. Um, and we lived in Nazareth. We, you know, we live very close to the churches in Nazareth and in the center of Nazareth. Um, we grew up um, hearing all the time the stories of Jesus and our Heavenly Father praying, going to the church. And um, we grew up on the values of the, the Bible, the values of love and loving the other so it's a, from a very young age. Yeah. Amen. I love that your, your roots go back to that at such a young age of Christianity. And walk us through too, you know, how is your faith and your relationship with God even challenged to this day, whether it's in the field or just anything that you might face? Um, I, I, I'd like to describe my relationship with God. It's like he's my anchor. And especially through these days and these difficult days when when the world feels uh, chaotic and uncertain and uh, when these those quiet moments of prayer and reflection that I find peace and guidance. Um, also in my way, as I mentioned before, to any emergency case and even after with the patient's family, um, so my faith is a resource uh, um, uh, that no matter how time or how dark the times may seem, uh, God's light will guide us through and guides me through. Amen. Yeah, I can almost only imagine too, just from your parents' standpoint, it's it's got to be scary for them to know where you are. I mean, what's that like for them? What's helping you guys to really carry you through to give you somewhat peace? in this midst of just trouble. That's right. And um, we definitely feel this. Um, we, we, they are scared sometimes. We're all scared. We're humans. But um, I think what, what uh, guides us all the time and what we think about is the verse that if God is for us, mm -hmm. who can be against us? And this gives us a strength and gives my parents a strength. And I think also the commitment of saving lives and of each one of us my parents also help in their role um they also do um many things to the community to the to to the israeli community mm -hmm. in in their um in their way i do it as a paramedic in the field so yeah. we all try to be part and to strengthen the people around us yeah well yes i mean we've got here for just less than a, about a minute here I, I love to be able to pray for you and anybody else that's you know in your field for your parents too. So, so could we pray for you real quick if you don't mind? Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Father, we just thank you. You say we're two or more agree upon anything, yes. it shall be done. Father, we just pray over Israel. We pray over Yasmin and anybody in her field, those around her. I thank you that you are using her strategically to be salt and lights on the earth. Thank you for protection over every step. Open up great doors of opportunity and windows to save people, but to also save them for eternity. I speak the peace that surpasses all understanding over her family, her relationships, and her friend. Everything Yasmin puts her hands to, it shall prosper. And I thank you that even in these scary moments, God, you will Will use them and turn them all around for your good to win souls and salvation for the kingdom of God. We thank you, Lord, for it. And we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, Yasmin, you. thank you so much for joining us today. It's truly been an honor. And thank you for everything that you're sacrificing today, too. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Well, hey, don't go anywhere. When we come back, we'll be joined by teens who aren't afraid to live out their faith and tell others about the good news of Jesus. We'll be right back.
Whether you're reading God's Word for the first time or the 40th, you're bound to ask questions along the way. Why can I be confident the Bible is reliable? Who decided which books made the final cut? What else do I need to know? For new and seasoned believers alike, the ultimate infographic guide to the Bible delivers invaluable historical, cultural, and contextual insights so you can better understand Scripture. Don't miss this special offer when you support the gospel ministry of Cornerstone Television today. These fascinating charts, graphics, and timelines will highlight key events, themes, and applications, provide background on the Bible's reliability and translation process, and equip you to understand its relevance to you today. Give your best gift and request the ultimate infographic guide to the Bible at 888-665-4483 or online at ctvn.org slash donate. It's no surprise that God has a purpose and a plan for the next generation. Our next guest are young people who are on fire for the Lord. Their hunger and desire is to live for the Lord and to tell others about His goodness and grace. We have John, Kyla, Tanner, and Ashley. Welcome to Hope Today. Thank you. Thank you. We're so glad you're here and just pretend there are people sitting on the other end of the living room. We're going to have a conversation. We want to know what happened this past school year in each of your schools. So who would like to start? Can I start on the end with Tanner? You absolutely can. Um, so we at Norwin, uh, we started uh, doing outreaches uh, for sports and clubs. Um, I would reach out to uh, different teachers who were leading the clubs and sports and uh, we'd work out uh, time in a day and uh, we would pray, come out and pray for the student athletes and awesome. club leaders and we would give out uh, cookies or drinks and um, you know we just fellowship together and enjoy time with Christ nice. right, and so that's a throughout the week we do Bible studies as well. Awesome. Okay. Yes. All right, Kyla, what about you? So the Warriors for Christ Club hasn't been super active in our school for a couple of years. But this year, um, my friend Ashley and I, we co-led and we did uh, every other week we did Bible studies and then we would also do outreaches similar to Norwin where we'd meet with sports teams or clubs and pray for whatever event they were going through and give them snacks, uh, give them a quick message of hope. And we also did a Christmas party for our school as well. So. Okay, that's amazing. Yeah. And you were at Penn Trafford. Yes. Go right. Warriors, we <laughs> heard that. All right, and John, my son, how no are pressure, you? No pressure, no pressure. We're sitting on the couch together, just like being at home, yep. you know? How about your school? But yeah, um, every Tuesday there'd be a Bible club and there was a lot of more events that we would try to do with really the school and try to get it. There was like worship nights that we would do. And it was just awesome what really God was doing and how he uses like little things that we can do just to encourage others, just to be that light in our school. But yeah. That's right. And what school were you at? Gateway High School. All okay. Right. Gateway Gators. Go Gators. Yeah. That's right. So I just think it's amazing that you, none of you are 20 years old yet, and yet you have such passion for God. So I'm just wondering, and we'll just do the same thing. I'll start with you, Tanner. And Ashley, she is the support behind it all. We thank you <laughs> Go for Go, Ashley. Being okay, here. okay. Right. All right. But um, in your life, what is something that has been consistent that kept you close with Jesus? Because this world is crazy, yes. you know? Like, how, how does that look in your life? The most important thing that I think was prayer for me. The, the more time I've realized that I've spent in prayer and uh, in the Word I, is when I felt closest to Christ. And it really helped me <clears throat> do what I needed to do in nights of faith and uh, even at church too. So obviously I have my own relationship with Christ and I spend time with Him every day, but I've really felt strengthened and empowered and supported through my friends at my youth group. Um, they've been super supportive in everything that I talk to them, if I have any problems, if I have any concerns, even about my Bible club, that they would be there for me and they would offer suggestions or ideas and without them I. I would probably be pretty sad and pretty lonely, so. Yeah, amen. What about you, John? I think just recognizing the love of God within me and just having that love for me, like 
I've tried different things. I've tried to go to drugs. I've tried to find that love through friends, through relationship, but all of it has not worked out because you know you can't build your foundation on something that's unstable, right. but God stays stable and just through Him, just having that love no matter what, that I can go back to Him even when I fail, when I mess up, and just having that that love of Christ within me and upon me is just amazing and His forgiveness is unreal. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's it's the good mm -hmm. news. It's yes. why you all share. Yes. It's so wonderful. Well, I'm just, I, you know what? There are kids, going to be juniors, mm -hmm. sophomores, freshmen next year, seniors, because you, are you all graduating this year? Yes. You're like, yes. we are done. We tossed our caps. <laughs> Praise God. But there is a, another generation coming behind you, yes. and I would love for each of you to just take a moment and intercede and pray for them. And what I heard them say is like prayer, the support mm -hmm. group, mm -hmm. you know, and just God himself and having that relationship. So these are things like me as a parent and hearing this or a grandparent, you're at home hearing this, yes. raising young people, help them cultivate these mm -hmm. very things in their yes. lives. I think that's so important. But Tanner, would you be willing to get us started and just pray for Absolutely. this up and coming generation? Absolutely. Lord. I thank you uh, for this great group that's here. And I just pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you are calling the younger generation that is coming after us, Lord, and uh, compel them uh, to lead in their schools and don't be afraid, be unashamed to share the gospel, Lord. And I just pray that you are with them and you bring them close to your heart, in Jesus' name. Dear Father, I thank you for the abilities and the talents that you've given um, me and to my other leaders in the club, in the Words for Christ Club this year, Father. And I pray for those that are coming after me, that you, I know you have selected them. I know you have chosen them for a reason, Father. I pray that you just give them wisdom and you give them guidance, Father. You help them to be unashamed. And in this crazy world, Father, I pray that they would be bold for you. And I pray that you would just help them and guide them through uh, this next school year and the years to come, and I pray that the Warriors for Christ would be a mighty army in your name. Well, God, I just come to you humbling, Father. I just thank you what you're doing, Father, and I just pray, Lord Jesus, for even Gateway, God, that your hand would be upon them and the blood would be upon them, God. Would you just speak through um, their hearts, Father, whoever is coming up in the Bible club, Father? Would you just lead them and guide them? But, Father, I just pray for this younger generation, God. Would we arise, Father, in the truth, Lord? Would we not find hope in unholy things or unthings that aren't of you, God? But would you be the foundation in our hearts, Father? Would we be led by you, God? And any spiritual warfare that is happening, Father, we just bound that in the name of Jesus. Father, would you break chains today even? Would you break chains this coming, upcoming year, Father? Would we see a revival in high schools, Lord? Would we see schools coming to you, God? And Father, would there be an unshakable foundation in schools, Lord? And Father, the ones that do know the truth, Father, would they have a boldness, God, to not care what people think about them, but Father, would they just be led by you, God, and only led by you, Father? I just pray, Lord, that your hand would be upon these high schools, God. Would we... Um, encourage even the older folks would that be the start father god of this government lord jesus it starts with a young father and would we just be on fire and have a a fire just for you lord in jesus name amen Woo! Amen. i say a joel okay. generations rising yes. up here it's so exciting to just hear you so this is a nine month mission so if you have a young person that is in the public school system they have nine months where they get to do missions, and it's wow. all through outreachclubs.com. Hmm. So if you want more information, maybe your school doesn't have one and you want to start one, or maybe you want to find out, go to outreachclubs.com and check that out. So I just, is there a parting question, Matt? I've yeah, you know, I mean, I'm inspired by you guys big time, but I'm just thinking even at a young age, there's always an intimidation, right, just to share the gospel, right, to evangelize. So what would you guys say to somebody your age? How would you encourage them to say, this is how I, right, share the good news to someone, you know, your age? I don't know. I, I myself, I've, I've struggled with it too. Uh, but just recently, I found that, you know, when I just stick to the gospel, you know, Jesus Christ and how he died for our sins, yes. 
I can have faith and trust that, you know, it's the truth. Yes. And when I just give it, you know, I can't do anything mm -hmm. um, on my end. I got to let Jesus Christ take That's over. Good. That's good. I, like and I just trust in that. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm not the most uh, outgoing person. And I understand <laughs> that it's very difficult to share such uh, a message in our school system today because not everyone wants to hear it. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's okay. It's okay to be afraid. That's yeah. natural. Right. Even if you don't feel that you can go up to someone random and tell them, hey, Jesus died for your sins, mm -hmm. um, your life is an example. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the way you act, the way you treat others, random mm -hmm. acts of kindness, all yeah. of that points to Jesus yeah. as well. It's good. It's good. That's right. Amen. Um, yeah, I, I agree with her, like just your lifestyle. I think that's mm -hmm. just a representation of who Christ is mm -hmm. by your actions, how you present yourself in front of people and how you act really and I think the strong, the hardest thing going up to people and I think just fear fear tries to stop me fear uh, mm. tries to get in my head like saying like you can't do it like what if they turn your back on you like what if they get mad or something yeah. and just coming to the realization that God is the only one that I need and he's the only one that can fulfill my heart and like what what matters then like yeah. knowing the god we serve like what else matters yeah. That's right. right yeah that's good. so yeah. true yes yes Amen. thank you guys so much for for being the light i know it's it can be challenging at times right but i love it says in timothy right just don't let people come down upon your youth but there's a translation that says just to be the example that they need mm -hmm. right to draw on to christ and, and i want to encourage any one of you guys watching today i mean today was all about being unashamed for the gospel, whether you're in the mission field, whether you're here in the United States, your home, your workplace, wherever it might be, God has given you a sphere of influence. You know, how well would you steward that sphere of influence? Because people's lives matter for eternity. And just like these youth are saying, I think we can get intimidated, but it's as easy as just sharing the gospel. God's word is truth. It's a light into our path. When he's lifted up, he draws all men unto himself. Let your light shine. Let your life be the greatest response to knowing this is what it looks like to have a relationship with Jesus. I want to encourage you today. God's got such a great plan in store, and that plan is for you to be victorious. But it's not just for yourself. It's so that your light would shine unto others so many will come into a relationship with Jesus. He truly is our hope for today.